Bangkok's Don Muang Airport, a Friday night in March 1996. It's the worst mistake that we've ever made in our lives because we didn't, we really didn't contemplate and think before we took the actions we took. OA473, the Olympic Airways overnight service to Sydney. Ground staff load the jet. What was more important to myself was the money I was going to make. $10,000. We're all employed individually. Three Australians booked on the flight are about to gamble with their lives, though they'll later insist they had no idea how much was at stake. What do you have? The Australian police had already knew before we even left Australia, apparently. And uh, they informed the Thai police and just waited for us. Lyle Doniger, Deborah Spinner, Jane McKenzie, arrested. Hidden in their bodies, ten condoms packed with heroin. As the three Australians begin to think through the consequences of drug trafficking in Thailand, OA473 backs up without them. Their last link with home, their ten children, the lives they've had up to now, all gone. some <laughs> very, very serious, a very, very serious offence was when they closed the airport door and on the back it has the level of trafficking laws and number one for heroin is the death penalty. We just looked at each other and burst into tears. It's not a place cameras normally go. Inside, rows of perfectly manicured gardens. 5,000 perfectly behaved prisoners. Music classes, computer classes, cooking classes. This appears nothing like the hell often described by former inmates of Thai prisons. There is, though, a failing jail officials admit to. Too many inmates. Even the new remand section, designed for 600, is hopelessly overcrowded. These cells, the prison's best, are the size of an ordinary Western living room. How many sleep in each cell? 72. We asked to see the older cell where the two Australian women are locked away each day, but were told we couldn't. If there is the day-to-day -day squalor Thai prisons are notorious for, it's hidden from view. My health is fine. Um, I'm doing OK. <laughs> as well as can be expected under the uh, conditions that I live in. I wouldn't say the conditions are wonderful, but you wouldn't expect them to be wonderful. Ask Jane McKenzie about overcrowding, and she bites her tongue, knowing Thai prison authorities will see what she has to say. How do you think conditions here might compare with Australian prisons? Uh, probably better I don't comment on that. So why would a mother of four, her youngest then just four years old, risk everything to smuggle heroin out of Thailand? Simple, says Jane McKenzie. She was a junkie. I wasn't thinking straight. I was under the influence of drugs. I was making a desperate attempt to do something. And it really didn't enter my mind that I would not be returning home. Did you expect this? No. no. Definitely oh, not. My worst nightmare is not. How do you feel? Are you guilty? Can you answer? Can somebody answer? 115 grams of heroin between three drug-addicted couriers. They argued it was a tiny fraction of the kilograms past traffickers had packed in suitcases. For Thai authorities, it was enough to impose the death penalty. Any message for your families? In the end, the court commuted their death sentences to 50-year jail terms. I just want to say to my mum and my babies that I love them and that I miss them very much. <laughs> Myself personally, a first offender, sitting here with a 50-year sentence is something I can't 
I don't know, I can't stand the fact, I can't relate to the fact. When at home, I probably would be putting rehabilitation for a year or maybe serve one year in jail. She's a foreign inmate, but Deborah Spinner still works here in the prison's clothing factory. Prisoners are given half the profits as savings. It's not what we're used to. I mean, it's not the average Australian wage, no. <laughs> Is it good work? It's, it's OK. It keeps you from, like, thinking too much, yeah. It's all right. But the most feared Thai prison of them all is this one. In Bangkok, they've etched the jail known as Big Tiger into local legend. It swallows inmates, they say. Many simply don't make it out of Bang Kwang Prison alive. 6,000 prisoners, all serving 30 years or more, some on death row. Among them is an Australian. He's not on death row, though he sleeps in the same building as those who are. How are you? Are you well? Yeah, yeah, fine. OK, well, we're inside. OK, yeah, I didn't think the day would come, but... Lyle Doniger is due for release from Bang Kwang midway through the next century. And I thought I was going to be back in seven days, uh, which turned into 50 years. Big Tiger's daily rations have taken a lot of weight off the Sydney drug addict turned trafficker. No, it's not enough to, you know, to sustain life. <laughs> That's a, a vegetable, something like a choco. There's two bits of meat in there, but they're on bone. That and the rice is the day's ration. At the moment, I'm lucky I've got some Vegemite. How did uh, you get that? Yeah, it's shipped over from Australia. Yeah, I've got a very caring sister and brother. The 48-year-old admits he's scared, that long before they let him out, he'll go mad. When you first come here, they won't change anything for three months to sort of slow you down so they can keep an eye on it and uh, try and slow down the suicide rate. I find most foreigners, they seem to hit a wall or something after about six to eight years. So I'm really sweating on it. Uh, I can get a king's pardon and be out before that happens. Hit a wall. What happens when you hit the wall? Uh, well, you speak to people here, you know how long they've been here. When you talk to them, they just seem to change. I've met a few people who are crazy, and that uh, other people said they knew them when they came, and they were quite OK. Like the two women he came to Thailand with, this father of four says drug addiction drove him to gamble everything and getting drugs past the authorities. How will you be pleading today? No, I don't even know if we enter in a plea today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oddly, he says he went after the illegal heroin as a substitute for legal methadone. I've been on methadone for 13 years. It was an opportunity to try and get away from methadone. Methadone is very hard to come off. But were you out to make money, or were you out to get yourself a supply of heroin? We were going to make one bar out of it. It was uh, the small amount that, you know, to receive was just to wean myself off. The girls had been told they'd get $10,000. No, it wasn't, it wasn't for the money. The, the other thing was to the opportunity to get out of, uh, out of Australia. Uh, at that time, I was 44, I'd never travelled. If he really did want to escape heroin, he's in the wrong place. Many here regard drugs as the only way to make life in the big tiger bearable. Lyle Doniger won't discuss whether he still uses heroin, but he does say he'd never take it in here with a needle. I feel really use needles that age. Uh, there's, there's no exception on that. Uh, there's no way I want to sort of ever get out of this place and just go back to die with AIDS. We came into the prison and it was a cold turkey. And we've been clean ever since. Well into our visit, prison authorities allowed us a closer interview with the two Sydney mothers, but for reasons best known to them, insisted we record it in profile. I never want anything to do with heroin again as long as I live. A year and a half after Jane McKenzie's arrest, her second husband died of a heroin overdose. Her two youngest children, now nine and seven, are virtual heroin orphans. Both mothers say their cruelest punishment is the separation from their children. My son was two and a half when I left. He's now five. He doesn't even remember me. I mean, to me, that breaks my heart. The innocent victims are their ten children. Most are likely now to grow up without even speaking to, let alone seeing, their missing parents. And that... that hurts. It's, sometimes it's unbearable. I'd take these conditions with me if I thought I could get back, you know, be near the children. 
They're going to grow up and not even know me.